I'm there. All right. Proverbs 27, verse 18, he says, Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waited on his master shall be honored. No, no, no. Y'all know something about fig trees, don't you? That's what we, that's what, that was our summertime food. Yeah, Mom and dad and them told us, you got to do one or two things. Stay in the house or stay outside, but you're not going to do both. And so most of the time that meant when it got up that morning, once you were outside, you were outside. You wouldn't come back in. And so it said, but I'm hungry. I need something to eat. You got everything you need right out there in the yard. Wasn't many yards that didn't have a fig tree. And so he said, the one who keeps the fig tree, who serves the fig tree, gets to eat from the fig tree. You notice? So those people would take care of that fig tree. Remember what they would tell you? Go pick them figs because I don't want them limbs to get too heavy. I don't want them to fall on the ground. Go get them figs. Because when you pick the figs that morning, later on that evening, there's going to be some more on that. And so because you picked the figs, what did you get to do with the figs? You got to eat the figs. And so God is saying this. You serve me, I'm going to serve you. You take care of me, I'm going to take care of you. He said, I'm going to honor, honor you. That's when he starts talking like he talked about Job when the devil comes around. Have you considered my servant Job? That, now, this God talking proud. The devil's wrong. I'm looking for somebody. God's going, have you considered my servant Job? And so a lot of people think that was a bad thing, but that was a good thing. Because whenever God had someone that served him, he talked good about him. When somebody did him something wrong, uh, when Moses' sister Miriam got to talking about him and got angry with him, he said, you don't talk about my servant Moses. <laughs> mm, no, you don't do that. And what did he do? He struck her with leprosy. Same thing. And, and when she came and said, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> he took it back from him. Same thing with Abraham. They started talking about Abraham. Don't you talk about my friend Abraham. Oh, when you serve God, God stand up for you. It's just like a proud parent. Oh, no. Mm -mm. You're not talking about them. Now, you know, I used to say, that's my boy, that. Mm -mm. No. Same thing. God honors you. And so that's, that's why the devil gets mad because God is proud of his children and he's not ashamed to boast about them. He's proud of them. But when you think about this, the great reward, and this is the one we hear all the time, the ultimate reward when you wait on the Lord and the Lord waits on you. And y'all heard it, and that's, that's Isaiah wrote this. He, he knew something about that because he knew about sometimes he was waiting on Uncle Uzzi and Uncle Uzzi couldn't even get it to him the way he wanted to. But once he got to be with God, he realized God can do some things that the other people just can't do. And when you're waiting on him and he's waiting on you, there's some wonderful things that's going to happen in your life. And it's an experience that you're going to have like nobody else. And so Isaiah said this, he said, but those who wait, Upon the Lord. And the, and the Amplified Bible says, those who expect, those who look for, those who put their hope in him. He said this, shall change and renew their spirit and their power. He said, they shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint or become tired. That, that's what happens when you got a, when you got a good waiter. You, you notice you usually go back and tell, "Oh, child, we had a good waiter at the restaurant. Didn't have to wait on anything." That's what God does when you're waiting on Him and He's serving you and you're serving Him. You ain't never got to worry about getting tired. You know, I used to be y'all. So y'all used to do go walking. We we used to be walking y'all, and we getting tired. Slow down. Your steps too long. You're not tired yet. No, I'm not tired yet. And that's what those old folks used to say. And we're going to leave with that. Remember, they all used to say this. I've been running for the Lord a long time. And I'm not tired yet. That's what happens when you wait on the Lord. And the Lord waits on you.